this is a cell result. And on the other side, we have Antonio de Morga. Both of them have a different perspective concerning geography, society, faith, and economy during the pre-colonial era. Rizal agreed to some of Morga's opinion and agreed not some. The story begins when Rizal annotated the book written by Morga entitled Taxesos de las Islas Filipinas, which discussed the state of the Philippines in the advent of Spaniards. First, we will talk about geography, location, climate, and plant species are among the things that is discussed in the book. Philippines was deserted and unhabitable. No. Ptolemy in his geography indicated three islands which are Simnagae, Gilolo, and Amboyna and their inhabitants. Thus, Philippines was not deserted and was actually habitable. It extends up to 12 degrees south latitude. Hmm, it actually is exactly 25 degrees and 40 minutes latitude north until 12 degrees latitude south. For climate, winter and summer are the opposite of those in Europe, as the rain pours from the month of June up to September, and summer from October up to the end of May. I don't think so, sir. In Manila, by December to February, the temperature goes down more than it does during August to September. Thus, with regards to the season, it resembles Spain as all the rest of the North Hemisphere. As for plant species, The ginger is eaten raw in vinegar or pickle, likewise much kachumbo, a plant giving both taste and color used in cooking in the place of saffron and species, and the buyo or betel which is made out of leaf are all abundant. Metal is kasubha in Tagalog. Next is society. Under it, we have body tattoo, indigenous people, women, and government. First, body tattoo. The inhabitants, the native, also known as Visayans, a pattern drawn by putting certain black powder where the blood oozes out. That is true. It is the same method as the Japanese. Now talking about indigenous people. The natives living in the sun are tribes whom one cannot be safe. To pacify them, although it has often been tried to do this by good or violent means. They will always choose violence until the government enters because of their inhumane ways as answers to those who do not submit to the friars. And now for women. Men and women are money-loving and covetous. So that when there is a price, they yield and when the husband catches his wife committing infidelity, he is a peace and satisfied without difficulty. We find it everywhere, even in Europe itself. This witness for the pay, I believe, is not a defect monopolized by Filipino men and women. As for government, there were neither king nor lords to rule them, located in different islands. Instead, they considered principles among the natives. I agree that there were no such kings or lords. Third is faith. Under that, we have belief on crocodiles, healers, and customs for the dead. Discussing the belief, on crocodiles. The natives build on the border of their rivers and stream in their settlement, where they bat traps and fences with thick enclosures to secure from crocodiles which they fear and venerate, as if they were somehow superior to them. Perhaps for the same reason, other nations have great esteem for the lion and bear putting them on their shields and giving them honorable epithets. The mysterious left the crocodile, the enormous size that it sometimes reaches, 
its fatidical aspect, and its voraciousness must have influenced greatly the imagination of the Malayan Filipinos. As for healers, Great sorcerers and wizards who deceived the people and communicated to them whatever they wished, they believed in omens and superstitions so that they could tell whether their sick persons would live or die. Speaking of the sick and Anitos, to prove their falsehood, Father Chirino tells the case of Armandao, who while sick offered half his body to the Anito to see if he will be cured. But if he was cured, what could be said now to those who died despite all the masses offered to the different virgins? Customs for the dead They buried their dead in their own houses, keeping their bodies and bones for a long time in boxes, and venerating their skulls. In their funeral rites, Neither pomps nor procession played any part, except only those performed by members of the household of the dead. After grieving, they indulge in eating and drinking to the degree of intoxication among themselves. We find it much more natural and pious to venerate the remains of our loved ones than those fanatical martyrs whom we have no dealings and who probably will never remember us. The economy of the Philippines depended on trading, the exploitation of cotton, artifacts, and gold. Cotton Cotton is raised through the island, and they spin it into thread and sell it. They also weave blankets in various ways, which they also sell or plate. Yes, they also harvest cotton and not just rice. Out of cotton textile, there was an encomendero who left a fortune of about 50,000. Artifacts the natives of the island sells articles to the Japanese and as a matter of fact, these bases have become very scarce owing to great demand there is for them. Yes, yes, as I have read from Dr. Jagor, these jars have very interesting history. Shape and value with some scorn with the price of 100,000 pesos offered for one of them. It's a pity that those objects had not been studied better. Lastly, gold. Throughout the islands are certain places where there is an abundance of rich gold deposits and other mineral products which are connected by the natives through washing or placer mining. But after the Spaniards had settled in the land, the natives become more lax in the mining of gold, contenting themselves with what they already had, in the form of jewelry and ancient ingots of gold. Inherited from their forebears, which were abandoned in themselves. The angels on seeing the wealth aroused the capacity of the encomenderos and soldiers, abandoned the work in the mines, and priest historians relate that, in order to save them from vexations, they recommended to them such procedure. Igorots felt that their gold was kept more securely in the grounds than in their own homes or settlements. I agree, the Igorots were right. So in summary, Rizal's annotation on Morga Successos de las Islas Filipinas clarifies the image of the native Filipinos in the advent of colonization era. For Morga, the Philippines was less of what it was before the colonization. But for Rizal, the natives have their own perfect geography, organized society, strong faith, and stable economy. Then, Filipinas, therefore, can be successful even without the intervention of the Spaniards. <laughs>